Howdy folks! So I recently picked up this uh, this TV for about 10 bucks at a local thrift store and it is a 50 inch Samsung plasma TV which dates to around 2008-2009 uh, manufacture and uh, the reason obviously why it was ten dollars is because of these uh, black horizontal lines on the image. So in case you're wondering, I'm just running the uh, the built-in test pattern on the image on the TV, uh, so you can you can see this easily. And uh, so this was I knew this in the store, uh, but I bought it anyway uh, because I thought you know if I can fix this problem, then great. I you know ten dollar fifty inch TV that's pretty cool. Um, and if I couldn't fix it, then it's not really a big deal because this being a plasma TV, it has a lot of high power, you know, high voltage uh, components inside that can be reused. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying uh, a broken LCD TV because nowadays they're just, you know, a couple chips and the panel and there's pretty much nothing in them. But um, these things are just absolutely chock full. The plasma TVs are just chock full of uh, quite nice parts, especially because I do vintage electronics and stuff, which are, you know, generally high voltage and things like that. So those kinds of components are reusable. But anyway, um, so I uh, I went through and you know did my investigation, um, and I checked you know the connectors, the ribbons, and the bonding of the ribbon to the panel, uh, and unfortunately it was none of that. Um, so sometimes, uh, especially with LCDs, if the uh, if the ribbon so that the data ribbons are on this side and the groundings on the other side, um, and sometimes they either come you know debonded from the panel, and you can usually use um, cardboard or foam or something to mechanically press uh, the ribbon back onto the panel. You can't really bond it. I don't have the equipment to do that. Uh, but I have I have fixed this kind of issue um, that in that way before. Um, no, it was not none of that unfortunately. So this these these dead lines are actually in the panel itself. There's probably no continuity through the panel, um, and uh, it's kind of unfortunate. But I haven't actually scrapped this TV, and the reason is because of where these lines are located. You'll see that they're all up in this top area here. Um, there's nothing down in this this area below. Um, in fact, the lowest dark line is 180 pixels from the top of the screen, and uh, this interestingly corresponds to one uh, one driver chip. There's a bunch of driver chips on this side, and they each handle 180 lines. So I, always, I actually wondered, you know, is the driver chip bad? But unfortunately, I don't have another one to swap it with. Um, and I, I'm still pretty sure it's the panel, but it could be the driver, but I don't know. Um, that's besides the point, though. Because all of the stuff is limited to the top of the screen, um, my thought was, well, if I can, I can still use this bottom area of the panel. So from corner to, you know, this corner here, uh, that's still uh, 47 inches. So, you know, I'm okay with a 47-inch TV, and in that case, it would be a 1920 by 900 um, panel, and I thought that would be be okay. But of course, I'd have to figure out how to get uh, the software that drives this panel, or uh, you know, that drives an input into this TV to to work like that. And uh, so I uh, I just want to go over um, how I got Linux to handle uh, a TV that's broken in this case. Um, so if you have a TV or a, an LCD monitor or something, and it has you know a damaged um, edge of the screen, and you want to um, reconfigure your, you know, you want to do a little bit of software hackery to still use the panel, um, then this, 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 this video is probably going to contain some pretty useful information. Um, if you're using Windows, there really isn't a hell of a lot that I can tell you, um, because I wasn't really able to find much. I didn't really spend a lot of time um, looking, to be honest, because I don't really use Windows. I only have one machine that has Windows even installed on it, and uh, other than overscan, um, adjustment which is symmetrical on the top and bottom which is really not not useful in this case so um, I don't have much to say but in terms of Linux um, I definitely do have uh, quite a bit of insight on this so um, what I'm going to do is I am so obviously I don't have the remote for this um, but I do have my old uh, my old uh, LG G4 which came with of course uh, the, that uh, IR blaster so I have this you know Samsung remote so I can uh, I do have the ability to do stuff remotely with it, which is quite nice. So I'm running uh, just you know HDMI from this uh, this PC here. Um, this is a super ghetto machine that I cobbled together. As you can see, it's built on a popcorn box, so it is uh, very much um, temporary, but uh, it's it's good enough for uh, driving signal into this. And uh, you can see I'm using a uh, 
this is an NVIDIA GeForce uh, GTX 750 Ti, um, and there's a reason why I'm using this video card, even though it's uh, ridiculously overkill for this, and I'll get to that in a moment. And yes, I know that I'm only driving it um, with one of those cables, um, and it's okay because it's barely doing anything. Like I said, it's just playing video. Um, so this will be cleaned up and stuff. But anyway, it's just driving HDMI into this TV. And so you can see that I am running... Um, uh, unfortunately, my camera may not want to focus on this, but I'm running Kubuntu. Um, this is just standard Kubuntu 18.04. And uh, you can see that it is considering the top of the screen to be... Uh, below the dead area, so all of the all of the dead lines are up here, and everything still looks perfectly fine. And so I think to make this make this work a little better here, let's just bring up something that's uh, let's bring up something that's not black, so that the camera can focus on it. But it's still a changing image. Oh boy! There we go. That'll work. So so you can see that everything you know when you full screen it. Um, as far as X applications are concerned, the good area of the screen, <coughs> excuse me, the good area of the screen is everything uh, below the lines, and this is exactly what I wanted. So um, one of my requirements for, 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 for sort of doing this was I wanted it to be completely application agnostic. So I know that you can use like um, MPV or VLC, they have pan scan options that allow you to restrict, you know, video to a certain area of the screen, and that's fine, and, and I, I think that would also work in Windows. Um, but of course, it's only one application, and I wanted a situation where I could go to, go to Firefox, you know, full screen a YouTube video, or go to Netflix or Prime Video or wh whatever, and just hit full screen and it just works. Um, that was my requirement. So um, you know, I didn't want to have to use special application settings. So I wanted to do this natively at the X server level, and so that is where XRander comes in. XRander supports uh, a number of sort of default options, which will work on any graphics stack, and uh, graphics drivers themselves can add proprietary options um, as well. And so um, some of the built-in ones uh, that, are, that are relevant for this is the scale and transform options. Now the transform option is interesting because it allows you to basically provide a, um, a transformation matrix that the input data goes through. Um, and using that matrix, you can, um, you can shift the image up and down and you can scale the image uh, along both axes. And this, uh, at first glance, looks like it would work because you can shift the image down and then you can scale it. Um, in, in my case, because they're horizontal lines, I want to scale it vertically. Um, and that will work. That will render a picture that, that looks like this. The issue is the image is scaled. So what you actually end up with is um, you end up with a case where the aspect ratio is wrong. It's basically stretched um, widthwise. And I didn't, I didn't want that. Maybe that's okay for your application, but I didn't like that. Um, now you could fix that, of course, by scaling it uh, horizontally as well and adding, you know, pillar boxes on the sides to correct the aspect ratio. And if you're only watching stuff that's like 16 by 9 or 4 by 3, then that works perfectly fine. Um, and you could just leave it at that and be done with it. But because I wanted to watch stuff that was wider than 16 by 9, like 21 by 9, whatever, uh, in that case, um, you end up having wasted screen real estate. Because remember, the sides of the screen still work fine. And so, in fact, if you actually watch like 21 by 9 movies and stuff on this, you can get exactly the same picture size as if all this was working fine. It's just shifted down a little bit because you're going to have black, black borders on the top and bottom anyway. So you don't want black borders on the sides because then you end up with a much smaller image and that's just, that's dumb. So I didn't like that solution because you would either be squished um, or you would end up wasting screen real estate. Um, because, so, and, and so I'll, I'll, I'll give you some numbers. So, like I said, this is 47 inches across this way. Um, if you add the pillar boxes on the sides for a 16 by 9 image, it's 42 inches. So a 50, 50 inch TV becomes a 42 inch TV, and I still think for 10 bucks it's still pretty pretty reasonable deal. Um, so the, the uh, so that, that, the transform and scale, I, I, I couldn't find a way to make it really do what I wanted. Um, and then I remembered that the NVIDIA driver, um, has some proprietary options, and one of them is called border, and uh, it basically allows you to set a you know an n pixel border on each edge of the screen individually, um, and there's no limit on how wide that border can be, uh, and so this is why I have this ridiculously overkill GPU in here because it's the only NVIDIA GPU I have that's new enough um, 
that you know works with their current mainline drivers and my new you know because I run I run like a 5.4 kernel on this like it's relatively new so um, my old GPUs don't really work too well um, but as, as long as you're using the NVIDIA proprietary driver um, you can just use the border option with XRender and you get this this is this is what's running right now and it works surprisingly well um, it's it, I know this is kind of a case of just throw hardware at the problem um, but honestly I, I kind of like this um, I could have also tried to screw with mode lines that's also another possibility um, but you know I don't really like that um, mode lines you know having to do all the math to figure out all the horizontal and vertical sync widths and all the other stuff and it's just a bunch of trial and error that just wastes a bunch of time and I just I couldn't be bothered to do that so that's why I, I went with the NVIDIA option and I think it works pretty well um, I did try AMD cards as well and they didn't have any proprietary options which uh, would have helped with this um, some some of the cards I have they have overscan or underscan options uh, but they generally work symmetrically um, on the horizontal and vertical, so that doesn't really help. And they're also limited usually to about 120 pixels on each edge. And since in my case it's 180 pixels of bad image, um, it wouldn't even be enough uh, to begin with. So this was kind of the only the only option um, that would work. Now there's only one downside to this, um, and I'll, I'll have to switch the camera from one of my hands to the other one. Um, and that is the way that the X server handles... Um, this kind of weird case where it's driving a 1080p signal but it's only rendering this weird 900 area and that is if you bring the cursor all the way to the bottom of the screen and beyond the bottom of the screen it actually causes the X server to shift by the you know the amount um, that you've, you've offset it by and if you do the same thing to the top of the screen it'll go back so it's it's kind of annoying if you whack the cursor to the bottom of the screen you have to just remember to bring it back um, but this, honestly, I'm okay with this. Um, maybe there is a way to fix this, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. So, um, that's the only downside that I've seen so far. Um, uh, now, as far as getting it to work automatically, now I'm using Kubuntu, so this is KDE, and if you're using a different display manager, um, you know, it's going to be different for you, but the way that I, um, the way that I got this to work, um, I like automatically at startup, um, all of the things I tried didn't work, so I tried X in RC, I tried X session, um, or not X session, um, uh, X profile. I, I tried a bunch of those things that are supposed to work. Um, none of them did work. I ended up having to actually put the X render command in SDDM's built in scripts. Um, so it has a script called X setup. Unfortunately, the keyboard's all the way at the back of the room now, so I had to go get that. But anyway, um, in X setup, all I had to do was just add the X render option. Um, to set the border, in my case, to, you know, 180 pixels on the top, and uh, that's it. Um, I think it has to be it has to be run in this script for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, um, but, you know, it, it's, right now it's kind of a hack, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll find a better way to do this, but this works for now. And that's how I got this thing, uh, this thing working. So I think I'm going to keep this. Um, I've only had it for about a week, that's why it's currently sitting on a chair, instead of a proper TV stand, I don't have speakers, and this doesn't have a case. It's all very temporary for right now. I, I've i never really bothered to own a TV, because um, I just do everything on my computer, you know, I have a 4K monitor, but I, I do like the ability to, you know, sit in a ch nice chair and put my feet up and stuff, so um, I think I could get used to that, so this is kind of my trial, and if I like a TV, then, you know, when this thing does die, I'll get a better one, um, like a new one, but um, this is perfectly fine for now. Um, the only thing that's kind of, I mean, it's a plasma TV, like, it's a pretty decent TV, um, however, um, I will say, um, it, it, it really kind of shines, uh, a light on, uh, plasma TVs, because I've, this is not my first plasma TV, um, I had, uh, in fact, my parents still have a 32 or 37 inch Panasonic plasma TV from a few years before this, and that TV was... Um, I mean, that TV was great, and it didn't exhibit any of the problems that people seem to talk about with plasma TVs, like burn-in. Um, and I always used to think, you know, like, what are these people doing to their poor TVs that causes burn-in and stuff? Uh, because I, had, I just, I'd never experienced it uh, until, until this thing. And this thing, I mean, if you leave an image on the screen for more than five minutes, um, it will persist for, you know, 10, 15 minutes after that. And if you leave an image on for, like, 30 minutes, then it's there for hours. Like, this thing is actually, it burns in incredibly fast. Um, so, like, I, I haven't managed to permanently do anything to it, but, like, 
I guarantee you when I'm done filming this video, this will be persistent on the screen for a bit. Um, so it's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so maybe, I don't know, either I had an exceptionally good TV, or maybe these TVs in particular were not that great. But uh, now I kind of understand the whole bad rap that people, you know, were giving to these TVs, because I just, I never experienced it with, with the plasma panel that I had, and this one is very different. So anyway, um, it's just one thing I got to be careful of, because of course, leaving all these static things on the screen is uh, not going to be good for the long-term uh, life of this thing as home theater PC, but anyway, um, mostly I'm just going to be, you know, watching YouTube videos and other assorted things on here. Um, one thing you could also do is if you had Kodi, I know Kodi has the ability to do overscan corrections, so you might be able to use Kodi by itself um, to, f to correct something like this. However, I believe it also just stretches the image, so I think you're going to end up with aspect ratio problems even if you were to do that. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's, uh, just wanted to share that, because uh, I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, it was difficult to find information about this, because anytime you try to Google anything to do with underscan or overscan, or black borders around an image, it's everyone who has black borders and wants to get rid of them. It's not the, I want to intentionally create them. Um, so it's, it's, it's unfortunately not super easy to get information about it. So, um, hopefully what I've given you is a good start to, uh, fixing this, you know, issue if you have it. Um, cause you know, if, if you have like a line or some defect or something on your screen and you want to just give it a second lease on life, um, this is, uh, I think one of the best ways to do it. So anyway, um, see you next time.